Welcome back. In this session, I'm gonna show how to implement bubble chart in uh, Risk Fire Assembly. As you know that I have been uploading videos about the Risk Fire Assembly instructions, whatever I learn. But then I took a pause on that. Instead of uploading, uh, keep learning about new instructions. I thought uh, I should try to write some useful code with those instructions, whatever I learn. That's one this bubble chart came into my mind. Uh, but to make a note, uh, this bubble chart needs uh, you to know about branch instructions, but I haven't yet uploaded the uh, video about branch instructions, but uh, it's simple, and I'm just gonna use one of the branch instruction, or uh, you can even learn by yourself from the uh, risk fire assembly document. Other than this branch instruction, I highly recommend you to watch this two minutes a YouTube video about a bubble chart. This is by a gentleman who has done it very well. The important thing about this video or the one which I like about this video is that it does not talk about any mathematics or it does not give you any pseudocode. All it asks you is to watch how bubble chart works uh, in two minutes, that's it. So the reason why I recommend this is whenever you write a code in assembly, uh, instead of looking at a pseudocode or a code which is in a higher language, instead of transferring, converting that exactly into assembly, if you just know how it works, uh, it would be better you, you write a algorithm which is appropriate to be written in the assembly and if you start implementing it would be easier and the code will be clean. So that's why I recommend this video. And the third one, uh, this bubble chart code would need you to know some assembly directives uh, but you know we already saw a couple of uh, GNU assembly directives like uh, dot global and dot extend other than that uh, this would also need you to know some risk five specific uh, pseudo instructions directives and relocation okay so I have given these links in the comment section uh, you can always access it so let's see, first let's see what is this uh, assembly directives. So I would like to give credit to these people here. I think they are really working hard to support this open source uh, development on risk five. So please give credit to these guys. So, but what I want to point in this uh, document is these are so these are the common GNU directives. So, maybe this is common across a, any GNU assembler. But what I w want to you to look for is this. There are a couple of assembler relocation functions but these are specific to risk 5 and uh, there are a couple of pseudo instructions these are also part of a uh, risk 5 for example as you know if there is a machine instruction then you can directly execute that but these are like pseudo in uh, pseudo instruction is like for example there is no machine instruction like J loop or J any label in the assembly uh, machine instruction in the specification but still you can use this in the assembler the reason is what would happen is so you write some code let's say like uh, load immediate is there any code okay let's take this yeah it says uh, load immediate a0 constant okay but if you go th if you see the uh, instructions of risk 5 you wouldn't see anything like a lie. There is nothing like a lie. You, you, all you will see is L U I. But if you write this in the assembly file, still it will work. The reason is so this uh, assembler will convert that into equivalent machine instructions like this. Okay, so this is like to make your job easy. So that is the purpose of the pseudo instruction. But this a uh, risk five uh, specific relocations are directives like these are directives why you need this is like for example you have a, a variable and uh, 
you want to catch you want to get the get or fetch the address of that variable then that is there wouldn't be any instruction in the risk by assembly spec rather uh, so that's why that's why you have this kind of uh, these are called relocation functions so what this will do is uh, the address of the symbol or label can be fetched into the register using this. We will see this soon. Okay, before we get into the assembly code, I would like to run through the assumptions I have made and the algorithmic steps I have written in the text here. So I have assumed that the inputs are all of uh, word size, which is 32 bits and input data are all of uh, fixed length. I think I have assumed, yeah, assumed that there are five elements and the input is expected to be sorted in the ascending order. Okay, these are all the assumptions. And I'm using uh, specific registers for, for a specific function. Like for example, I'm using A0 register to store the base address and uh, T1, three temporary registers, T0, T1, T2 to store temporary values. And I'm using S1, S2 to store the loop counters. S1 is for the outer loop and S2 is for the inner loop. Now regarding the algorithm, it's a straightforward algorithm. The, I haven't done any special optimization or anything here. So basically the outer loop runs from, okay, so initially the number of sorted elements is set to zero. Uh, so basically there is no element in the array is sorted. So it runs for n minus one times. And uh, for each iteration of the outer loop, one element will be sorted. And since this is in the ascending order, that element will be pushed to the end of the array, okay? And uh, so then the base address is uh, read into the, or stored into the A0 register. And then the next consecutive value is read and the uh, based on whichever is uh, bigger or smaller uh, yeah swap maybe may or may not be performed and the inner loop basically runs from uh, n minus one minus number of sorted uh, elements until zero okay so this is the inner loop that's it so i have given the link for this uh algorithm in the comment section if you want you can always um, go through this so now let's jump into the code. Okay. So I have separated the memory view here. Actually you can, so there's option for you to detach a view and you can move wherever you want. I have moved the memory view I have detached the memory view from here and moved it here for a reason so so that I can see the memory address of the input array and you can see how these values are changing and here you can see all the uh, uh, registers view so so I would just uh, run through the code and I would also give the I have also given the link or the code in the comment section. But before we get into the code, so few, uh, what is this? Few assembly directives and few assembly directives are the relocation functions and branch instructions. So these are new here. So, so in assembly, if you want to add uh, assign a value to a constant variable, this is how you do. So dot eq and the, it's like, a, this is the equivalent of a C macro. So you create a name and you assign a value to that. So here in contest for, this is what the assign text for or the assembly directive. This is an assembly directive and this is how you write in the assembly. And the other thing I want to, or uh, this I discussed before, you can see here, a light is not a machine instruction. This is a pseudo instruction. So this would store the value of the this constant into this T2 register. I think these all I have covered in the previous videos. Okay, the branch. So this is like branch less than, if T0 is less than T1, it will jump into the swap. 
otherwise uh, it will jump under the no swap label okay otherwise it, this will be executed and i'm also using branch beq branch equal to so if t3 is equal to zero then it will be it will jump into the underscore skip okay so let me open the okay steps here S1 is outer loop. So that's the outer loop, and you are loading the base address of the input array into A0, and I'm fetching the first value, then S2 is set here, and the inner loop is run for n minus 1 minus outer loop value and increment s1 and see if it has reached this n minus one value and you stop it okay so i'm not gonna read each and everything further i'm just gonna show you how it runs let let me just run and debug run through i'm gonna execute this so please pay attention to this uh, memory view here and the register values here okay let me step in so you can see that a and a are swapped You can see in the memory view that the bigger value gets moved to the end of the array. I'm just running it on a real hardware hi-fi board. Okay, that's it. You can see here, so our input was 10, 8, 5, 3, 1. It was in this order. Now it has become 1, 3, 5, 8. I'm just gonna give some random value and see if it works again. It's like 50, 34, 16, and 75. And we'll do 80, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5. And build. I'll just I'll run up to this. I'm not gonna step in into this. So 10, 22, 32, 4B, 5. Okay. Okay. Let me view this and this now. Sixteen, thirty-four, fifty, seventy-five, eighty-three. Okay, so that's it. I hope that is helpful. Thank you.